sir uh, shall we go live sir yeah uh, okay sir uh, hello and welcome to the youtube platform of iapsme connect a very good evening to all our viewers uh, we came with a very interesting topic for today's session and the topic is the science of early child development and nurturing care framework and myself dr pentapati siva santosh kumar senior resident department of community and family medicine aims mangalgiri and the pradesh uh luckily i got the opportunity to moderate this session i welcome you all on the behalf of entire pg lecture coordinating team under iapsm e connect this is a part of the series of pg lectures and moving ahead in the series we are here once again with our distinguished faculty for today dr sridhar sir welcome sir thank you uh coming to the introduction of sir Sir is currently working as health specialist, UNICEF field office for Karnataka, Andhra Pradesh, and Telangana. Uh, you can see about uh, Sir's introduction on the screen. Uh, sir is medical doctor with masters in preventive and social medicine. Sir has done MD SPM from South Gujarat University, having attended a university gold medal. Sir is trained at University of South Florida on advanced clinical epidemiology. and biostatistics health economics sir has won uh, the eng scientist award for best scientific paper at gujarat state conference and best paper at the international conference on equity on inequity in maternal health sir has accomplished sir is an accomplished public health professional with more than 13 years of experience in advocacy health program designing and planning health innovations capacity building and implementation of maternal and child health programming in seven major indian states after post graduation sir has worked as tutor in the department of community medicine gmc surat and later as state consultant for mch in unicef gujarat and then state rmnch plus ca consultant in karnataka for unicef supported programs for four years he sir has contributed to unicef's mission as a health officer in the assam office and for 3 years as a health specialist in unicef chatisgarh dr sridhar sir brings sound no technical knowledge as well as strong analytical and program management skills with a significant understanding of the issues on the ground sir has contributed to two national guidelines enquas national quality assurance standards for public health facilities and maternal death surveillance and response sir has also co-authored a handbook on health biostatistics before beginning i shall repeat the sequence we wish to follow for today's session so today's session will be covered as ppt for around 50 to 55 minutes followed by questions received through google form and closing session so over to you sir thank you santosh thank you for that uh, very warm welcome and introduction can i share my screen now ah uh, yes sir is it visible it is visible sir so is it full screen now yes sir it is full screen yeah thank you and uh, really very happy to be in the middle of uh, our dear post graduates so first of all i want to thank uh, the ipsm community with the uh, special thanks to the president of uh, ipsm for the current year dr kadri and uh, uh dr anna rao kulkarni who is the president elect for 2024 and my immediate uh, past president dr harivansh chopra and also the current secretary for ipsm dr prashottam giri for uh, giving me this opportunity to present my views or some understanding of early childhood development to all the post graduates and also special thanks to the the pg lecture team of this e connect and also dr santosh for all the coordination and uh, making this happen today so uh, before going into uh, the presentation 
uh, of my topic of science of early childhood development in the global nurturing care framework for early childhood development so the basic question is what is that determines our intelligence so how is that a person can become intelligent or uh, another person is of less intelligent so is it the genetics which is going to play a major role uh, in our human life which determines our intelligence or is it the care during the pregnancy while the baby is in the womb of the mother or is it the delivery practices or uh, the care we take of the newborn uh, in the less than 6 years or is it actually the preschool or the schooling or the college we go later in our life so to answer all these questions this the entire session will give you uh, the reasons and the rational and the science behind uh, answering all these questions so to know this we need to have a some background of our human evolution so that we understand why this early childhood uh, development is important and what is the neuroscience behind it so the evolution if you see uh, from a single cell organisms to multi cell organisms now we are humans that is the entire evolution which darwin proposed in between we had amphibians we had reptiles we had mammals on the ground and then the mammals on the trees the birds and then uh, the apes and then the humans so this is very important i am uh, particularly telling about these reptiles and mammals because when we go to the brain of the uh, human being in uh, the coming slide i want to present you need to know this and if you see once the evolution reached the stage of an ape and till the man though the physical changes were very less the major changes was in the size of the brain and the volume of the brain if you see the graph on the right side till the human beings had a brain with the capacity of uh, 500 uh, cubic centimeter so we were called as uh, homo habilis so when the size of the brain reached up to 1000 cc then we were called as uh, homo erectus and the current homo sapiens what we are called as now the size of the brain has reached 1500 cc so this is a significant increase in the brain size and this is the only evolution which has happened uh, in the uh, apes uh, with minor physical uh, changes in the appearance why this is important we'll come to know so the brain has increased in size but what are those components which has increased in the size uh, which made to increase this size of the brain and if you see the brain evolution you can see the human brain has three parts the you can see the left side of the picture in this slide uh, the basic part which is called as a primitive brain or it is also called as reptilian brain so you see the in the evolution we have got this part of the brain which was there in reptiles and this is still persisting in our brain as a human beings and this brain is basically a instinctual brain or we can also call it as a dinosaur brain and uh, the brain stem and the cerebellum are the major parts of this brain so this is made to uh, made for survival as an autopilot so whenever there is a crisis or uh, there's a, a nature need we immediately respond to it or reflexively we respond to it but this brain this part of the brain doesn't have any emotions or any memories or habits attached to it so that is why it is called as primitive brain if you uh, remember we call as crocodile tears why crocodile tears because the crocodile is a reptilian brain it has no emotions attached to it but growing in the evolution we got one more brain which is called as the limbic brain or the emotional or feeling brain so this part of the brain we have de derived it from the mammals and the birds so the birds more than the instinct they also have those emotions and the feelings the Uh, the limbic system part the pituitary the hypothalamus or ventricles all these form part of the limbic system or the limbic brain but the limitation here is they can't control their emotions or they can't control uh, their uh, behaviors based on uh, the intelligence so the third part of the brain which is the most important part of the brain is called as the uh, neuro neocortex or the rational or thinking brain so as the evolution uh, uh, in the evolution the human brain has got this neocortex and the neocortex is important because this controls both the limbic brain and the reptilian brain which is unique for the humans and this is what makes us to learn languages have rational thinking have imagination have reasoning rationalization and the abstract thoughts why i am saying is this even though in the context of childhood development is even though the newborn born with all these three parts of the brain it is only the reptilian brain or the primitive part of the brain of the baby is which is only developed or is more functional at the time of birth 
so the moment after the birth you put the baby into the chest of the abdomen of the mother make the baby to suck the uh, breast milk the mother sees the baby loves the baby cuddles the baby then this emotional limbic brain starts get activating and future in future the how the baby is nurtured and uh, the most important is the responsive feeding and the responsive care giving that is where the neocortex develops a lot so in the context of early childhood development so development of all these three parts of the brain particularly the neocortex is very very important so uh, then how this brain develops in the utero you see this is a very interesting slide uh, you can see the real images at the top the three images of the brain taken from a, a autopsy of a baby and the animated images are the below you can see the different Uh, stages of pregnancy 22 weeks 26 weeks and 29 weeks how the brain looks like at 22 weeks to 26 weeks you see it is a very smooth bilobed structure there is no gyri rays or sulca uh, sulcations but it is just a smooth bilobed but as the uh, weeks of pregnancy is increase you can see it is becoming more uh, serrated version there are more complex gyrations the gyrations are the uh, elevations in the brain and the sulcations are the depressions or the deep uh, sulcus in the brains and uh, if you see by the uh, week of 40 it is fully developed the entire gyrations and sulcations is very complete so it is estimated that by 40 weeks totally 100 billion neurons are formed in the brain and if you see the speed at which the new, uh, neurons are formed it is more than 250000 neurons per minute and once these number of neurons are formed these neurons stretch their dendrites make those connections and uh, connect with other neurons and build those connections and if you see each neuron on an average has 15000 connections and this connections determines the intelligence of a person and uh, if you see almost 700 neural connections in the brain happens every second in the first 1000 days of life so how this is important so why this is important from early childhood development so if you want a intelligent baby to be born and if you want a person to be intelligent in future of life your 50% of chance is lost if you don't intervene in the first 40 weeks of pregnancy so even before the baby is born the intelligence is determined by the number of neurons are formed in utero while the uh, the mother is pregnant so if you don't intervene there you have lost opportunity but if you intervene there you have a great uh, improvement in the brain development later in life so that is one significance the other significance of this understanding of this brain in utero is in the next slide i want to talk is about understanding what is preterm and term so during our mbbs mbbs days when we used to read the obstetrics or even pediatrics so the common definition is any delivery less than 37 weeks we call it as preterm any delivery between 37 to 42 weeks as called as term and more than 42 weeks is called as post term now what is the rational of de deciding this cut off as 37 weeks as preterm and more than 37 weeks as term so the scientific rational or the physiological rational for this was based only on the lung maturation so at the 37 weeks the lung is mature enough to survive and to support the uh, survival of the uh, of the baby after birth so that was taken as the consideration but the brain development was entirely lost in this definition so but this was later identified debated globally and then now they have come up with the new terminologies added to this definition where between 34 to 37 weeks is called as late preterm and 37 to 42 weeks is divided into 3 37 to 39 weeks is early term 39 to 41 weeks is full term and 41 to 42 weeks is late term so why this is important because you saw in the earlier slide so by 40 weeks you have 100 billion neurons uh, coming but it, less than 37 weeks uh, almost the 25% of the brain which was supposed to be developed at the uh, 40 weeks is not yet developed but when you decide for having a elective delivery or a elective cesarean section we always consider the definition of term as a criteria for delivering the baby so 37 weeks you can easily take the baby out if there is any indications but in terms of brain development please wait till 40 weeks and then or at least up to 39 weeks 
for the brain to develop. Uh, develop. And this has also a significance when we, uh, I was talking in the previous slide that more than 700 neural connections are happening every second and every neuron has 15,000 connections uh, by the time of birth. And uh, you see the amount, the rapid speed the neurons are developing. So if during the pregnancy, if the mother is uh, uh, has anxiety or depression, or there is a domestic violence, even the husband quarrels with the mother for even a five minutes, you see the amount of damage done in brain development in terms of uh, uh, number of neurons developed and number of neural connections. So all those neural connections are done in response to the stimuli, what mother smells, what mother eats, what mother listens, what mother behaves, what mother feels. Now, even for the five minutes of such negative signals, you can have those negative connections which will impact on the brain development in future. So with this rationale, the science says that because of this rationale, we say reduce early or elective deliveries or C-section prior to 39 weeks. So if you want a healthy and intelligent baby, uh, worth is the weight. So if you don't do that, if you deliver baby uh, before 7, 39 weeks or before 37 weeks, then there's an increased chances of NICU admission. There's an increased chances of transient tachypnea of newborn. There's an increased respiratory distress syndrome. The ventilatory support may require more. Ch baby is more from prone for success and all these feeding problems can happen if the baby is delivered premature. So that is the science and rationale. Second interesting and most important is uh, from the early childhood development point of view or from the brain development of the baby, we need to avoid maternal stress. Maternal stress amounts to almost 30% of preterm birth. Uh, this is a global data, but it is relevant for India also. It also doubles the risk of behavioral problems at the age of four to seven years. More the maternal stress during pregnancy, more the chances of behavioral problems in the children when they uh, finish the preschool and come to school. And how this uh, maternal stress impacts the brain of the child, there's a huge pathophysiology of it, the increase in cytokines. It is the same what we used to talk when we used to talk about stress during COVID, the psychological impact of COVID, it is the same mechanism. The cytokines, the catecholamines all play a major role, but all these increase the maternal cortisol, which passes through the placenta, increases the fetal cortisol and causes uh, the brain damage. The fetal cortisol not only impacts the brain damage, but it is also a trigger for premature delivery and intrauterine growth retardation, leading to a low birth weight baby delivery. Another interesting science and its significance is the importance of oral hygiene during pregnancy. So oral hygiene can reduce preterm by 45 to 65% among those mothers who had oral infection. So you treat, prevent oral infection, you can reduce uh, a preterm by 45 to 65%. And if a, a baby is born to such a mother, the baby can also carry the childhood carries uh, and you can prevent it if you uh, address the oral hygiene during pregnancy. The mechanism is the infection can transmit through hematogenous route. And if there is no hygiene at the uh, birth canal, that, can, that we call it as ascending route of infection. And the oral cavity, we call it as hematogenous route of infection. And this can cause uh, a, a trigger for preterm delivery or a low birth weight delivery. I'm not going to detail of this pathophysiology uh, in the interest of the time. This is another interesting, which even I read recently, some uh, uh, one or two years back, there's something phenomenon called as flavor bridge during thousand days of uh, early life. So even the food choices, which the mother has during the pregnancy and the food choices she makes and she eats, uh, even after delivery while she is breastfeeding has a huge impact on the infant palate. So if you want to have preferences in the infant, what the what your child uh, should eat and what the child uh, should prefer as a choice of their food can be determined or reinforced uh, very, very early in the life just because with maternal uh, or the mother's preference or the mother uh, 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 consciously adopting those uh, nutritional habits which she wants to inculcate in their newborn. So that was one. And uh, this is all what we talked, uh, what happens in the womb of the mother uh, during pregnancy. And now we come to the stage while now the mother is delivering. 
So we need to take care of the brain while uh, the baby is in the womb. Now we need to take care of the brain of the baby while delivering. So this was the question, uh, which has been, uh, 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 the answers have been tried uh, to answer by most of the scientific community to understand what is the trigger for the labor pain. So who is actually starting the labor pain? Is it the mother from her uterus or is it the baby or is it any other factor? Uh, which is causing the labor pain or initiating the labor pain after term or preterm or full term. So the conventional understanding of the physiology of labor was when the baby is reaches a certain stage of uh, size, which cannot be uh, hold within the uterus of the mother, it stretches the lower segment of the uterus. So the stretch receptors in the lower segment uh, trigger or uh, increase the sensitivity for the oxytocin which again triggers the hypothalamo-pituitary axis of the mother, which in turn secretes more oxytocin and then the labor starts. So in the entire physiology, uh, the entire attribution is with the mother uh, to start the process of the labor. And uh, it was said that the baby has no role in initiating the labor. But the recent evidence says that there's a subtle talk between the mother and the child at the birth. So birth is too important to be left entirely to the mother. At Amsterdam University, the scientists have concluded that a childbirth requires both interaction between the brain of the mother and also importantly, the brain of the child. How this mechanism works, I can, I'll can i just explain in briefly in this next slide. So the trigger for the labor starts from the decrease in the glucose level within the baby. The blood, the, glucose, the blood glucose levels of the baby, when it decreases, there is a hypothalamopituitary axis uh, initiated within the brain of the baby, leading to the increase of corticotropins. Corticotropins in turn activating the fetal adrenal gland to increase the cortisol. The cortisol crosses the placental barrier and it decreases the progesterone in the mother and as you know, the progesterone is a protective hormone. It protects the pregnancy. Now this progesterone is decreased. And uh, secondly, there's an increase in estrogen because of cortisol in the uh, mother's blood. So the increase in estrogen makes the uterus more receptive to the oxytocin. And then that triggers the hypothalamus pituitary axis within the brain of the mother. That triggers inc to increase more oxytocin. And then the contraction starts. And when this contraction starts, then the lower segment of the uh, uh, uterus is further stretched because of the baby trying to be pushed down. And the further stretch uh, augments or the increases more oxytocin release and then the uh, process of labor starts. So this is the recent pathophysiology, uh, sorry, not pathophysiology, the physiology of labor uh, during the birth. So the, uh, the take home point from this is the labor starts when the baby's blood sugar starts to drop is a sign that mother can no longer provide the growing child with sufficient nutrition. And Michael Hoffman says, when the child's metabolism accounts to more than 15% of the mother's account metabolism, that is the trigger for labor. So this point is reached when there are twins or triplets, this trigger is early. When there is a, a single pregnancy, then the trigger is late, usually at the term. So uh, this is what we call it as uh, the subtle talk between the brain of the mother and the brain of the baby. But if you use epidural anesthesia, if the mother is not able to bear the pain, and this is the more modern, uh, the allied or the uh, families usually uh, want a painless labor and they take for epidural anesthesia. But if you use epidural anesthesia, this entire signal or this uh, talking between the brain of baby and mother is inhibited. So that results in lower oxytocin, more complications during pregnancy, during delivery, more uh, time to recover, and less uh, success in breastfeeding the child. So oxytocin, again, has a very, very uh, important, interesting uh, function. You see with this graph, you see the levels of oxytocin, which is uh, marked in red. So during delivery, the oxytocin level is high. But if you see, very much interesting is 30 minutes postpartum, the oxytocin is very, very peak. So for the next three hours after delivery, the oxytocin levels is high. So you may wonder, the oxytocin is required to conduct delivery to, for the labor process to start. But why the oxytocin peak is there after delivery? And there's especially first 
two to three hours. That is because oxytocin has another function, which we call it as a, it is called as a bonding hormone, or it is as a love hormone, which increase the bonding between the mother and the newborn. So, and uh, it, this has impact on the bonding of the baby. This will have impact on the brain of the baby and also impact on the behavior of the baby in future of life. So it is so important, this science tells us that immediately after delivery, please don't separate mother and the baby. So keep the baby and the mother intact only if there is any serious indication with the fetal distress, then take the baby to radiant warmer and further management. But even after that, try to see that as soon as possible, give back the baby to the mother so that uh, we take the advantage of this uh, natural oxytocin surge after delivery. So this is, we talked about the science during pregnancy, then the science during labor. Now what is happening after the baby is born and how the brain development happens and how the neural connections happen for different functions which has been given by the Center of Developing Child from Harvard University. If you see from this graph, you see the uh, uh, slightish yellow uh, bar uh, curve, which talks about when the sensory pathways for vision and hearing starts. If you see the first, uh, the x-axis, the minus is minus one, minus two, minus three. These are the months uh, during pregnancy. The one, two, three, plus one, two, three, till 11 to 12 is in months of the first year. And then from two onwards, you can see they are uh, in years. So if you see, even before the baby is born, the sensory pathways are starting developing. And if you see the peak, it is in the first two to three months after delivery, the vision and the hearing sensory pathways are at the highest. So uh, the more 3D models now during ultrasound, you can see the baby is able to hear, the baby is able to see, the baby is able to touch the feel, the baby is to uh, uh, is takes the, uh, in ultrasound, if you can see, the baby is taking its uh, finger to its mouth. It is trying to feel, it can touch the inner surface of the abdomen in the uterus. If mother touches uh, the stomach, the baby can feel that touch and it also responds to that touch. So, so much of sensory stimulus happens even before the delivery is happening. You, you must have heard famous mythological stories where uh, in Mahabharata, a, a very brave character of Abhimanyu, you can see that he learned uh, the entire uh, uh, fighting of entering into the Chakra Vyuha during his pregnancy. And, uh, uh, and that, that actually coincides with the, the time when the hearing or the inner ear develops within the baby. Similar, we have stories of Bhakta Prahlada, when uh, the Narada Maharshi used to train uh, the Hari Mantra during pregnancy of Bhakta Prahlada's mother. And uh, you see he becomes the uh, greatest devotees of Vishnu and takes against his uh, demon king of Hiranyakashipu and later on. So, so many stories you hear in mythology. And uh, that correlates here what we are talking about science of ECD, the development of vision and hearing. And second interesting, you see the language. The language starts even before the pregnancy. The last three months of pregnancy is very critical for development of language. But if you see the peak of sensory pathway developing for language, it is in the first year, in the six to seven months, and then it is coming down. And almost it is touching the baseline at the age of four to five years. And see the higher cognitive functions. Again, peak uh, at the first year of life, ending in the first, by the second year, it is always tapering. By the age of 14 years, it is almost uh, at the baseline. So this science is very important when we talk about early childhood development, the nurturing care framework. So this is all dependent on what this science is telling us. So again, to reiterate 100 billion neurons with 100 trillion connections developed during the first thousand days of life. And that is critical for the brain development of the child. So first thousand days are the most critical. So we talked about immediately after delivery, uh, what are those? To go into more details of this cognitive development, you can see the vision development starts immediately after the birth and is almost over before the end of first year. Speech development over before the three years. Emotional development, it starts completed uh, before two years. The mathematics and logics, you see it's two, two and a half years maximum. Social attachment and skills up to four years. Motor development starts well before the delivery, even during pregnancy. And the maternal stress is the highest hindrance 
for this motor development during pregnancy and it is completed by four four and a half years the peer social skills starts at preschool age at the age of 3 years up to 6 years and if you don't stimulate the baby for social skill at this age the baby, the child will never develop social skills in the entire life similarly language if you want to make the baby learn more languages the great opportunity is first 3 to 4 years of life you can see another neuroscience examples from neuroscience how the early stimulation of the baby helps this is the brain activity of the baby in during uh, when the baby hears a mother's voice and when the baby hears a stranger's voice you see when the baby baby hears uh, his her her own mother's voice which is very familiar to the baby during pregnancy now after delivery if you are uh, seeing these electrodes and doing a pet scan and making the baby to hear the mother's voice the left side of the brain is activated because it is familiar baby need not use creativity to understand or recognize what voice is this baby already knows but the same uh, uh, if uh, the voice of a stranger is uh, made to be heard to the baby you can see the right side of the brain is activated so this lies the importance of activating the right brain that activating the right brain is activating your uh, abstract thinking activating your rational reasoning and the creativity so uh, that is shows the significance of early stimulation so in nutshell the first 1000 days are most critical and this uh, uh, this infographic or the uh, interventions which has been showed in this slide is identified or uh, 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 it is talked about by the lancet series where lancet series identifies all those critical interventions which can impact the childhood development through a life cycle approach right from the adolescent and adulthood till the school age they have identified all those interventions but the series highlights among all these interventions the interventions in the first 1000 days are the most critical we will come to these interventions in our coming slides in our programming in india so it is not only about the brain development when we talk about early childhood development but if you also see the economic returns if you want to invest in human capital in any country uh Uh, if you see during the life cycle so do we need to invest in prenatal programs or do we need to invest in the preschool programs or the schooling or post school the job professional or vocational trainings if you see if you want the highest returns the investment in the first 1000 days so for every 1 dollar you invest you have a returns of 13 to 15 dollars so that is the human capital investment we can do in early childhood development so having said all this why is unicef talking about all this why unicef is talking about neuroscience uh, and all i wonder you might uh, never heard talking about all this and you might have a different picture on how unicef works but here is the rational till 2015 we were focusing uh, as a millennium development goals and unicef was committed globally to support each and every country to achieve these millennium developmental goals if you remember the famous mdg 4 5 and 6 Uh, talks about reducing the uh, under five mortality talks about reducing the maternal mortality talks about addressing the infectious diseases uh, such as uh, malaria tuberculosis and other uh, communicable and non communicable diseases but when we moved from millennium development goals to sustainable development goals we are not now only talking about the survival so in mdgs it was more about surviving the babies surviving the mothers and considering their morbidity but when we moved from mdgs to hdgs it is not only survival but also thrive develop and transform so that no child is left behind and for this the major intervention is the early moments matter so intervene early to get more results and that is why unicef being a flag bearer of hdgs as a support to every countries on achieving hdgs now we are prioritizing early childhood development as one of the global priorities for unicef work in the uh, in the countries and also uh, in india some of the global guidelines on ecd so this 2016 this lancet series you can see the first two images uh, a series of lancet uh, uh, articles were released on early childhood development the science to the scale the, and most of the uh, points which i covered till now comes from this lancet series and i encourage all the post graduates to go through this all the series as a student of uh, community medicine or a student of public health 
So based on this Lancet series, the WHO uh, released its guideline on improving early childhood development. So you Google this, you have this presentation with you. Google this, you'll get this guideline. And again, this was based on the Lancet series. And UNICEF also adopted the Lancet series and the WHO guidelines and have global guidelines on early childhood development. The first guideline you see on the left side of your uh, slide is the nurturing care for early childhood development framework. Then we have a uh, building futures, the quality standards for early childhood development for South Asia module globally available. And recently we have released a vision document for early childhood de development for every child. And this vision document is for uh, guiding the UNICEF programming for ACD in every country till 2030. So what are these uh, nurturing framework or the Lancet says about early childhood development is this nurturing care framework. This nurturing care framework has five components. It talks about good health. It talks about adequate nutrition. It talks about responsive caregiving, security and safety of children, and try to uh, uh, utilize the maximum opportunities for early learning. We will quickly go through these uh, individual components of nurturing care framework. The first coming to the health. So we have talked about more of uh, uh, evidences till now. Few Excuse more me, sir. From neurosciences is that. Sir, 15 minutes more for the lecture. As yeah. you told me to remind you. Yes. Sir. Thank you, Santosh. Yes. So the evidences from the neurosciences say that increase in toxic stress among human and the metabolic systems can increase the risk of non-communicable disease in the later in the life. So in contrary, the children who are protected from illnesses, especially from diarrhea, pneumonia, and other childhood illnesses have more potential to uh, their uh, growth and development. So that is the evidence for health. And when we talk about health components, it is not only health of the baby, but it is also the health of the mother, health of the father, and the health of the caregivers because they... Sir, recording is in progress. You can start now, sir. Yeah. So these were the health components of the global nurturing care framework. The second is, if you look at the, all the five components, most important component, if you ask me, then that is the component of nutrition. So nutrition is not only impacting the child survival and the body growth of the baby, but it has a huge impact on the brain architecture, cognitive development, and the school readiness. And when we talk about nutrition, it is not only about the child nutrition, but it is also the maternal nutrition because maternal nutrition status affects her ability to breastfeed the baby and also provide the adequate care. Third component is parenting. The parenting, the cognitive, physical, social, and emotional development of the child in early life can be negatively affected by a lack of nurturing and stimulating care. In vice versa, if nurturing care can affect the adversity it can also improve a positive nurturing care can also improve the brain function throughout the life even affecting the future generations so if at all you want a parent to do good health adequate nutrition provide the safety and security and also do the early learning and stimulation it all depends on how responsive the parents are and how responsive they are providing the care to the child so this component has implication on all the other four components of nurturing care framework. The fourth important component is early learning. When we say about learning, we imagine what we learn in Anganwadi schools or the preschool in a private or in a, a schools and colleges and later. But this learning, we are talking about the learning in the first thousand days of life. And this learning starts right from the, when the baby is in the pregnant, uh, when the baby, when the mother is pregnant and baby in the womb, the, how the mother stimulates the baby. That is also early learning. And how do you use all the opportunities for interaction of the baby during the first thousand days of life, which we'll talk in the upcoming slides, how to stimulate those baby. These all include component of learning. Fourth component is child protection. If you see any uh, 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 incidents of violence, abuse, or neglect and traumatic experience can increase the high levels of corticosteroids or the cortisols, which has an impact on the brain development of the baby and also impact on the development of non-communicable disease and addictions in the future life. So this component of safety and security refers to the safe and secure environments, even avoiding the children from uh, eating anything, even avoiding uh, the children to reach out of the sharks in the family, uh, avoiding the child from the road traffic accidents, avoiding the child from drowning. All these are part of the safety and security component. And you see the evidence, you see the lower blue bar, the control bar, when the baby is born with a low birth weight, 
with the developmental quotient less than 100 if you don't give the nurturing care framework the potential is lost and you see the developmental quotient not improved even after two years if the baby is supplemented with the responsive feeding the quotient is increasing up to 100 if the baby is stimulated with, by play and good health you see it is going more than 100 but if you do both the responsive feeding and the play and stimulation it is more than 105 but if you see the baseline the red one when the baby is born normal with the normal weight no uh, uh, issues at birth and has a high potential at birth with more than 105 development quotient and you do stimulation and supplementation the quotient the development quotient has potential to go more than 100 so this is how geniuses are born in the country you see the package of interventions from government of india from the health department the wcd department the education department you have antenatal care institutional deliveries home based newborn care special newborn care the, in the facility based newborn cares immunization program the imnci program in the nutrition the growth monitoring breastfeeding early initiation of breastfeeding exclusive breastfeeding complementary feeding so in even if you see the uh, water and sanitation the jal jeevan mission the swachh bharat abhiyan trying to provide potable water and good sanitation at all the household facilities and all those flagship programs of portion abhiyan jal jeevan mission national health mission mission vatsalya swachh bharat abhiyan saksham manganwadi campaign all these flagship programs directly or indirectly are providing one or the other services of uh, the early childhood development but while providing these services the thinking or the rational behind the early childhood development is still not uh, uh, instilled in the mind of the service provider which is now has to be the priority of these national flagship programs uh, coming to the health specific programs for early childhood development so we have a mcp card which has all the information on early childhood development we will see about those in the coming slides and this is an excellent tool for sensitizing the mothers and the community the asha workers uses these mcp card when she does home visits under the home based newborn care and the home based young child care if there is any delay from this the normal see so there is a separate mobile team under rashtriya bal swasthya karyakram at the block level who visits these children once in a year at anganwadis and schools and does screening of children for all the four d's the disorders defects deficiencies and developmental delays and if further treatment is required for a low birth weight baby at essencius for a developmental delay baby at the district early intervention center for a sam baby at the National nutritional rehabilitation center so all these are there existing in the program the the, we, the need is to strengthen this program improve the quality and do uh, the coverage saturation has to be done when i talk about coverage saturation one example i can give the rashtriya bal swasth karyakram targets only the government schools so what about all those children who are in the private schools the rbsk team screens all the children in the anganwadi centers so the only the beneficiaries of the anganwadi centers come during those uh, screening visits and anganwadi caters to more to 3 to 6 years so the 0 to 3 years are left out and those children who are not part of the anganwadi's beneficiaries are also left out so improving coverage improving quality and building the capacities of the system for early childhood development is the need of the hour so you saw those five components of nurturing care framework so to impart these nurturing care framework unicef has developed this responsive parenting guide book and includes all those messages and we have in the unicef in hyderabad office with the support from the indian institute of public health we have uh, expanded this uh, guidelines and uh, made it age appropriate so that all the five components of nurturing care framework are taken care and these parenting messages are included in that i'll not go into detail of all those slides but few points in each slide i will try to highlight by the age of 6 months baby is most of the time sleeping for 15 to 18 hours but you see that whenever the child is awake at least four to five times in a day talk to the child sing songs to the child tell stories involve the child in play activities why you see albert einstein telling if you want your children to be intelligent read them fairy tales if you want your children to be more intelligent then read them more fairy tales and the famous montessori schools the pioneer the founder of montessori school montessori schools the maria montessori says the most important period of life is not the age of university studies but the first one the period from birth to the age of 6 so accordingly scientifically activities are suggested and the scientific background is provided behind that here you can see for a 0 to 6 months child you can see those uh, dangling objects hanged 
uh, above the face of the child so that the face the child can see it and get uh, uh, the stimulus you see the mother trying to place uh, the child on her tummy and shake a rattle in front of her see the child is trying to grab that uh, rattle see the child is trying to see the mother try child is trying to lift the neck so that the neck stability improves the head stability improves you see the father holding the thighs of the baby and trying to look at the baby smile at the baby putting the tongue out of the baby making those funny faces catching the baby's attention so this will help the baby for sensory development and early muscle coordination similarly other activities you see uh, uh, while uh, bathing the baby trying to uh, rub the baby give a gentle massage to the shoulders and the abdomen and the thighs try to hold the baby gently looking at the eyes of the baby hug the baby cuddle the baby it is not only the mother the father also engaging with the baby and uh, when the baby cries don't allow the baby unattended try to attend the baby calm the baby even if your voice is heard from distance the baby gets comfort it gets soothed so this all helps in bonding with the baby and improves the social and emotional development of the baby which is very very important for the behavior of the child in future similarly you have activities for 0 to 12 months and the science behind that you can see uh, the toys and the play materials are spread across and you see that girl child playing with them you see the mother trying a, a peekaboo with the towel or dupatta you see the grandfather uh, trying to play with the child you see the, the father trying to identify the animals identifying the birds in the images uh, trying to teach the baby the body parts where is the nose where is the cat the animals birds Uh, trying to say the child's name so that the child understands the language understands the recognition of the child with the name so this all helps for improving the hearing speech and communication skills similarly you have activities for 1 to 2 years 1 to 2 years other activities 2 to 3 years now the child is able to walk able to child is run it is able to have more abstract work it can do more uh, a skill based activity the child can do so stimulate the child accordingly uh, give the Uh, uh, child an object and uh, hide it and ask the child to find that object put you see the uh, picture of the child trying to put large beads in a string this hel helps the pencil graph and also the uh, cognitive ability of the child different colors the playing see similarly for 2 to 3 years uh, other activities other activities and science behind you see the grandparents trying to play with the child with all the vegetables trying to name those vegetables mother trying to see pictures from the book uh, see the children are taken out to a vegetable market and trying to engage the baby there children there so these are all the questions which we need to uh, tell the parents or the frontline worker need to ask the parents whenever they are doing the home visits do you talk to your child do you make those noises do you sing those songs do you read recite or stories do you express your love are the father the grandfather the male members of the family uh, talking to the child feeding the child playing the child by the having a bath to the child and also any negative impact is happening are you shouting at the child are you abusing the child several cultures the beating the child is considered as normal for making the child disciplined but that is not so and is the parents are the parents aware of age appropriate developmental potential of the child so these are all the uh, gaps in stimulation of the baby which we need to initiate we need to talk tell them we need to build their capacity and make the parents aware of this so other components of responsive care you see you should not allow the child to wear watch the tv or smartphones before the age of 2 years considering the screen time and even after 2 years the screen time is restricted only 1 hour per day uh, if the more the screen time it affects the sleep pattern and the attention of the child so uh, these are all components of the care giving make a daily time table of the child when the child should wake up when the child should teeth, uh, sleep when it should brush the teeth what time they need to have the breakfast what time they need to have the meals what is the play time everything celebrate all the traditional festivals cook all the traditional foods stimulate the baby as much as possible provide a positive home environment whenever the child is angry or showing tantrums don't scold the child don't uh, uh, expect the child to do whatever you say whenever you want child to do these certain things what you want the child to do give a reason behind that give a rational give a logic to it and explain the baby will definitely understand that reasoning and try to follow your commands rather than disciplining the child by scolding or uh, shouting at the child so encourage the child discipline the child i already spoke gender equality i already told 
it is not only engaging the male members of the family but also the toys which we give to a girl child or a toys which we give to a boy child to play usually the kitchen toys are given to the girl the guns and uh, the more masculine toys are given to the boys uh, even when the uh, household activities when they are doing, uh, when they are uh, asked to do the boys are asked to do those male activities that buying something from the outside but the the girl child is made to wash utensils or sort the clothes or such types so that gender inequity should not be there both the girl and a boy child should be stimulated with gender equality safety and security i told uh, see that your children is away from the medicines or tablets away from the fires away from the pesticides away from sharp objects so that child is safe and secure this this is the minor things against the violence abuse neglect those are the uh, higher things of safety and security similarly other uh, we saw respond uh, the two components of uh, nurturing care framework messaging now this is nurturing care framework uh, on healthcare immunize your child see that the early illnesses are identified like example diarrhea is identified early and give ors and treat the diarrhea don't go for moderate to severe dehydration uh, see that the child is immunized very early the illness the doctors are uh, uh, attended and the health problems are solved the child is in a clean and hygienic environment responsive feeding you know first 6 months exclusive breastfeeding 6 months to 1 year complementary feeding add oil and ghee to your child's feed do not force feed the child you see the picture the father child feeding the child so one of the uh, uh, global advisor was always talking to feed the child under two you require two people alone mother is not possible so the support of the family for responsive feeding and nutrition is important one to two years toddlers have high energy requirement at least three healthy meals and two to three healthy snacks in between is important for responsive feeding and nutrition at the age of 1 to 2 years 2 year onwards you can see the same food what is cooked in the cooked in the family for other family members can be given uh, to the child and there are other points i will leave it to you for further reading and i told the mcp card is one of the excellent tool in the mcp card you have all those messages on uh, importance of breastfeeding and uh, the complementary feeding you see at each 6 months 6 to 9 months 9 to 12 months what should be the feeding practices for the baby is beautifully explained in the mcp card and along with that you also have a uh, the developmental milestones as per age appropriate very crisply explained in the mcp card you see in the green this left side by the age of 2 to 3 months there are things what the babies can do and the mother should be watchful of and what are the parenting tips uh, uh, so that the baby does these activities and uh, gets stimulated early uh, the earlier presented slides what i told about the parenting tips are taken from this mcp card and developed into further more tips which is a more comprehensive than mcp card but for the frontline workers mcp card is more than enough similarly if the what are the warning signs at 2 to 3 months of age is clearly explained if any of these warning signs are there then the mother has to immediately take the baby to the uh, healthcare provider or a pediatrician or a developmental specialist Yes, Similarly, minutes. we have four to six months. What babies can do and the parenting tips, warning signs at four to six months, seven to nine months, ten to twelve months, twelve to eighteen months, eighteen to twenty-four months, two to three years, up to three years. You have everything in MCP card. Last few slides on what UNICEF is providing support from early childhood development in India. We have developed a home-based Kangaroo Mother Kangaroo Mother model. which is an important from breastfeeding point of view and taking care of uh, childhood or uh, low birth weight babies we were the technical support for developing this mcp card in gujarat we have a 1000 day compliant health facilities arambh is one of the successful model which unicef initiated on early childhood development in maharashtra it started in uh, varda through the uh, partnership with mahatma gandhi institute of medical sciences uh, in a tribal block now it has been uh, scaled up in all the tribal blocks in maharashtra now they are expanding it to the entire state humanized touch in the newborn care where we have all these uh, uh, skin to skin contact the family participatory care all these practices should be practiced in a uh, special newborn care unit from the brain development point of view another initiative from unicef the parvarishki champion the most of the slides which i showed is taken from parvarishki champion modules where we have a flip chart a floor floor game and the posters on key parenting messages we also have a film of 12 minutes and five short films of 3 to 4 minutes and a training film for ashas under the parvishki champion module we have a ivrs uh, uh, intervention by the name of dular 
where there are 20 modules of parenting across four topics, which are delivered through the telephone call to the beneficiaries. We have developed various posters and IEC materials and communication materials on different age appropriate groups. This is uh, the earlier one was from Maharashtra. This is from Uttar Pradesh. We also have a video intervention called Alna Palna in Telangana. The same parenting messages uh, are developed in terms of videos and are uh, the capacity of the Anganwadi workers are built to use these videos to provide the early childhood development. In Telangana, we also have initiated the advanced collaboration of early childhood development and uh, uh, empowerment, where you can see all the government partners, the academic institutions, and the NGO partners. We have come together as a common platform to improve the early childhood development in state. These are the few resources which we have developed in Telangana. So with this caption of UNICEF, for every child, early child moments matter. I feel this session uh, is somewhat useful for all of you and triggers you for further reading. Thank you for all for all the patient hearing. Thank you. Over to you, Santosh. Uh, thank you, sir. Thank you so much for the wonderful session, sir. Uh, sir, we will take a couple of questions, sir, like uh, before winding up. Uh, we have only 10 more minutes left. Yeah. Uh, so, sir, the first question is, what is the role of cultural and societal norms in shaping parenting practices? And how come the nurturing care framework be adopted to different cultural contexts? So quickly telling, see, cultural and social norms play a very significant role in shaping parent practices. It influences the expectation placed on parents and based on the values and beliefs surrounding the children. Uh, uh, so different cultures have their own different set of values. See, for example, the gender roles. If you go into the Meghalaya, it is more of matriarchal family. Other than uh, that, in many of the states, it is patriarchal family. So the culture very much influences the early childhood development. When we adopt the global nurturing care framework to your own cultural set settings, we should be very sensitive to of the culture while we uh, design those messagings and we all we do design those community-based programs. But some of the harmful practices from the local culture norms should also be identified from the early childhood development point of view. And we need to introduce into our educative and awareness uh, programs. This much I can say. Okay, sir. Uh, sir, a second question, sir. Uh, what role can technology and digital media play in early child childhood development? And how do we balance the potential benefits with the concerns about screen time and its impact on nurturing care? Definitely. See, uh, technology and digital media, it can play both positive and negative roles in early childhood development because it, we need to strike a balance between uh, what uh, the question says about the screen time and also the potential benefits of technology. So when we say technology, it is not only the child should see the uh, smartphone or a mobile or a video and learn it, but technology can be all, also used to develop a very good educational content under early childhood development. So technology can be used certain apps for skill development. So, and when there is a, a need for a customized learning, technology can help a lot. Uh, for example, I can say, uh, 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 we have the Palan Thousand, Palan Thousand app, which has been released by government of India. So we have in Dutch, uh, the, the app, which has been developed for early childhood development for refugees. In uh, Nepal, I saw one of the intervention where they're doing teleteaching, that uh, the teacher is talking to on phone to the child and giving those uh, parenting messages and also talking to the parents of the child and giving those guidance to the parents. Even in YouTube, there is something called as YouTube Kids, if you're all aware, if you can go and see in YouTube Kids, if you go to the channel, there the entire content of YouTube is uh, uh, verified and whichever is relevant for the child from the childhood development point of view is only shown in that YouTube Kids so that they don't see any other this. But there is also parental control in that so that you can uh, control what the child can see, what child cannot see and how much the child should see in a, a day or in a week. So technology, you can use as it's a double-edged sword if you want to use for its benefits it's beneficial if you uh, uh, abuse it it is has a negative impact okay sir uh, sir are there any grant opportunities or uh, research funding opportunities from unicef on early childhood development as of now currently See, going you, on unicef doesn't invest in basic research so unicef is more of a technical agency and the implementing partner to the government of india the basic research usually is the domain of WHO within the UN. But if uh, having said that, if you have any 
uh, operational research where you want to implement something and show the results better way of implementing early childhood development in the community better implementation of the say for example the rashtriya bal swasthya karyakram of government of india so there definitely you can look for scope for from unicef if you see the aram model which i told from maharashtra it is totally funded by unicef to the mahatma gandhi institute of medical sciences and the community medicine department there in collaboration with the pediatric department has taken it and it is a it is a substantial amount of funding if you see the funding for institute of public health in uh, uh, hyderabad uh, that is totally funded by unicef okay so those are the areas you can consider okay sir uh, sir uh, now the questions are over sir uh, so i will go to the vote of thanks part uh, sir it was a wonderful session and uh, sure will help our audience in understanding the science of early childhood development and uh, nurturing care framework many many thanks for the session sir and uh, sorry for the technical glitch which happened in between and uh, thanks for bearing with us uh this session would not have been possible without the diligent efforts of the iapsm lecture series team above everything uh, everything we thank each and every participant without whom this session would not have been this much fruitful we encourage everyone to become member of iapsm if you are at to become one also if you wish to be notified of the sessions ahead please do subscribe do, to this youtube channel we would meet again next fortnight with at another interesting topic for discussion until then happy learning goodbye thank you sir thank you so much sir thank you thank you